Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In this week's show, it's all about learning. You know, one of the great things about being an angler is you never stop learning. And after 14 seasons of doing the new Fly Fisher, I can tell you everybody here has learned a lot and is still learning. We're gonna be dedicating the show to the tips and tricks that we've learned. We're gonna be talking about Northern Pike, smallmouth bass, Atlantic salmon, and brook trout. The tips and tricks we've learned. I know you're gonna love it, stay with us. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Scientific Anglers, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet, Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net. You know, bad weather can really impact your fishing, especially for species such as smallmouth bass. In this first segment, Bill Spicer are going to be dealing with post-cold front smallmouth bass. The conditions are really tough. But what we're going to do is we're going to be looking for certain types of structure, and we're also going to be adapting our retrieves to be successful. Watch this. It's late season, and the weather is changing, bringing in cold front after cold front. Cold fronts will challenge all your angling skills. This is mainly because fronts send most fish into negative feeding moods. What is a cold front? A cold front can be described as the edge of a colder air mass that moves in on a warmer air mass. The intensity of the front will vary. Rain, high winds, and overcast skies occur in the initial stages of most cold fronts. After the edge of cold air passes, typical weather conditions are bright, blue skies, few clouds, low humidity, and a drop in air temperature. These post-front conditions might be pleasant for most anglers, but they make for really tough fishing. There's a fish, Bill. Yes, it's a good fish, too. Right by a rock where you said it would be. Oh, he's putting a good pull on your rod. Yeah, a real good pull on my rod there. I think I want to get him on my reel. Now, Cold weather tactics, John, we've had to slow down, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Colder weather, Bill, you've got to slow your presentation down. And presentation you know, is more important than anything, really, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, Bill. Like, yeah. you know, that, that fly basically has to crawl across the bottom. Yeah. So you've got to go down where the fish are, right? Right. And this is a good fish. That's a nice, that's a nice bass. Very nice bass. So presentation, though, that's the far more, that's even more important than the, than the, the selection of fly, right? Well, I think so, but again, like, you know, we're in a little bit chalky colored water, so yeah. my choice of the fly was to go to that black fly to give us a good silhouette. Silhouette, right. right. So, you know, a black bugger is a great little fly to use in mm -hmm. this situation. A right? little bit of weight, and you're down there with a fish. That's a good start. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's a real nice start. Yep. Okay, this time. This time, I think we got it. Head up and skate him up behind me. Just take your rod right over my head. There you go. Very nice fish. Very nice Isn't fish. Isn't that beautiful, bass? It's a good, good start. Beautiful Very color. nice start. Look at the color yeah. and, stuff. and cold front bass, we've had to slow down our presentation. That's the most important thing, is, is how you present the fly. Beautiful. Slow it down to wow. a crawl. I'm talking a, just a crawl. Uh, these fish, because we've had a major cold front go through today, that they're hunkered down. You gotta put it in front of them and slow it down. A big smallmouth kept coming out from under the dock, shadowing my fly, but never taking it. I kept changing flies, trying to find the right one that would trigger a take. There he is. Got him. 
That is a big bass. All right. Whoa. <laughs> I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that was a lot of work. I saw that fish three times and couldn't get him to come up and take it. And then I missed him. And then you give credit to my cameraman. I was looking at the flies, trying to decide what to come back with. And he picked the bright, flashy, and gaudy one. He said, that's the one you want. And you know something? It worked. Look at the size of that bass, folks. That's a big bass. Oh, look at the one behind him. It's as big as he is. Ho, 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 ho. This is why you come to Rice Lake. Oh, look at the size of the one right behind him. I hope the camera can see that. Look at that. It's as big as he is. Wow. <laughs> and I've got him. <laughs> look at that fish. Look at that bass. It's as long as my arm. It's huge. And look at that fly right in the top corner of the mouth. Isn't that beautiful? See the end there, 20, 21, 21 inches. That's a rice lake bass. All right, let me know. Early season northern pike fishing can be very difficult. One of the problems is these post-spawn fish are very scattered and they don't have structure to relate to. The weed beds are not that defined. At the same time, the other problem we have is if you don't have the right fly set up, you're going to lose a lot of fish. In this next segment, Bill Spice and I are going to join two northern Ontario guides who are going to teach us some secrets for success to catch these fish. The northern pike is a cool water species, and its habitat is usually slow, heavily vegetated rivers. Stewart's strategy was to put out marker buoys to identify the edge of the weed line, and then work the fly along the side of the beds. Pike will hide along the edge of the weeds, waiting to ambush their prey. I got him. I got him. Yeah. Good one. Now we're fishing uh, around weed beds. Stuart has put out some marker boys to mark where the edge of the weed bed is. And we've been, uh, we've been going up and down it. Boy, this is, oh man. Fighting like a good one. He's fighting like a good one. Yes, for sure. He, he, he headed for open water. That's what we need. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the way he took it was, I felt nothing all of a sudden. I, I, was, I was stripping it in, and all of a sudden I felt nothing. So I set the hook, and I actually seen his, his tail come out of the water just a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Nice fish. Nice fish. Now, that's on my perch pattern, and that is the main bait here. Wow. Sewer, I'm telling you, you've got some big fish here. <laughs> they got all enough food in here that they grow big. Right, right. And you said this is one of your, your favorite spots. It's like Christmas when it comes up. Yeah, I know. Well, this is Christmas. I'll tell you right now. This is Christmas. Your arm's shaking a little there, Bill. I'm, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm getting tired. Oh, man. Now they're big. <laughs> I'll keep, I'll try to get her head back up. Got it. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes, 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 yes! <laughs> <Bye, buddy. laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Wasn't in, Walt. See, I told you, come out real easy. Yeah. Barbless hooks. You can win the fight of a big fish on barbless hooks. Oh man, we just put a tape on this. Just put a tape on it and it's 46 inches. You gotta come to Kasagami. Oh man, what a fight, wasn't that a thrill? Oh, not gonna hold it out too long. But oh man, huge, huge fish. This ties my best fish.
John Yukich shows us how to modify our fly for more hookup success. What we're doing here with our flies, which is very important because we're losing some uh, nice fish before, you have to add a little treble stinger hook to the back of these flies because these fish are so big, when they hit the fly, they flatten the fly and when you set the hook, it's just pulling out. So with this little treble hook, it's getting them right in the corner of the mouth when you set the hook, which is really good. Also, which is very, very important, is the use of a wire leader when you're fishing these northerns with the fly. This is a, a 24 pound test wire leader, a tieable one. It's very, very important that after every fish that you inspect your wire leader, make sure there's no nicks or crinks or on it because you don't want to lose that fish of, the, of a lifetime. Pike are sight hunters, but they also like to use their other senses to detect prey. Their lateral line, of course, is one of the key ways they can detect bait fish and, and prey such as small walleye and perch, but they also use their uh, sense of smell to detect prey. Oh, oh there's a the fish. Big fish, big fish. Oh yeah, he hammer it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he, he, Did he you hit see it like that? a cut of bricks. That... Oh, he just slammed it right, the, right in front of the boat. Oh. Oh, there he is. That's a nice fish, buddy. Oh, oh yeah, man. Oh, let him go. Baby let doll. Him go. Let him go. Get this on the reel. Get on your reel there, buddy. Oh, oh, there. There you go. Oh. Oh. Colin, you're a fishing machine today. Oh, he's strong, isn't he? Oh. Whoa, stay in the boat. I'll take care of knocking you in. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's gone right into that weeds. Okay, I think I got him up. Yeah, you got him up there. He just came out of nowhere and hammered that fly. I just made a short cast because I saw a weed clump. Oh, look at him right there. Oh yeah, look at him. Oh, look at that fish. Did that, that, that one? Oh, he's not ready. Oh. He's not ready. He's still green. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, come here. Okay. Oh. Wow. What, what, what a great fish. You ready? There we go. Oh, nice fish, yeah. my friend. Wow. Yes. <laughs> it was so much fun. Oh, I love pike fishing on a fly. 38. 38 and a half. In fishing, one of the ultimate highs is using dry flies to catch wild brook trout. And I'm talking big wild brook trout. We're talking three, four, five pounders coming up on top taking a dry fly. I mean, it's truly exciting for an angler. In this next segment, we're gonna share some tips and techniques we've learned over the years for catching wild brook trout. I know you're gonna love it. Watch this. Now, I'm gonna start off, we're seeing some rising fish here, and Wayne told me to start with a bomber. I just had a rise right here. To me, a bomber is an Atlantic salmon uh, fly, but he says it works very well on the brook trout. Well, I'm gonna find out. Now, we work them a little bit differently than you do on a, on a stream where you want a dead drift. Here we're gonna actually re, retrieve them in and try to make a little wake on the water and see what happens. Got him. Got him. Yes, sir. Two and a half pounds, maybe. Still a beautiful fish, though. Lovely. He won't be long. Well, that was me. <laughs> Wasn't quite sure if that was me or not. <laughs> oh, this one's a this one's a well-colored fish. Wow, it's really well colored. 
Not sure what it took, whether it took the dry fly or it took the nymph. I'm not sure. I have changed setups here. I got a dry fly and a nymph on. It's called a hopper dropper or dry fly dropper. That's a good fish. Really well colored, isn't it? Yeah. This is almost fall spawning colors, this yeah. one. Oh, wow, it is a great fish. Yes, sir. All right. Well, now look at the colors on this one, folks. This is a fall colored fish. Look at how red the bottom is. Yet this is only July. Wow. Well, give them time to revive. Now you wait till they want to swim right out. You got a kick into it. Yep. There he goes. Now this is a Goddard caddis, and it's a uh, deer hair caddis that's been spun. And it, it's, it's very buoyant. And so the technique I'm gonna try is skittering the caddis. Uh, caddis flies when they hatch, they bob up and down, they skitter across before they fly away. Uh, a mayfly is different. A mayfly just gets up and, and tries to dry, dry its wings first and floats. Where a caddis though actually skitters across the top, fish see that, it excites them. And now I'll show you the technique uh, this will work on any trout stream. Uh, it's very effective for brown trout, but uh, on brook trout it also works. So uh, watch what I'm doing here. I cast it out. Get a good line out there and cast it. And when it lands, I take my rod and I just shake it like that. And what that does, it, it skitters the caddis, then I stop, let it drift, skitter it again, let it drift, pick it up, Cast again, skitter, stop, skitter, stop, and skitter. Whenever it stops, that's generally when you get your hit. Uh, very seldom they hit it on the skitter. They, they see it, they'll follow it, and when it stops, that's when they grab it. Let's hope it works. There we go. Got him. My goodness, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Oh, and another good sized brook trout. My goodness. Oh, <laughs> do I ever like this spot, Anthony? <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is unbelievable. <laughs> I know I'm saying that a lot, people, but this is unbelievable. <laughs> Yes, sir. There you go. Again, this is unbelievable. Good, healthy fish. And away he goes. You know, fly fishing for Atlantic salmon is so exciting. In this next segment, we're going to be talking about some techniques for fly fishing for Atlantic salmon, the king of sport fish. When dry fly fishing, it's of utmost importance to be quiet. That means how you make your, land, your fly land and how you lift it up off the water. Land is easy. You just want a nice soft landing. Let it land like so. Now, lifting it off the water, you don't want this. That created sound makes this big smacking noise and will spook the fish. Now there's a couple of ways we can lift the line up off the water to stop that. What we want to do is break the film on top of the water and we can do that by wiggling first and lifting up. I'll show you again. Wiggle, lift it up, or we can do what's called a snake roll, which is that. And what that does, it breaks the surface tension of the water and allows you a silent lift. When searching for Atlantic salmon, never pass by a tailout pool that has an exposed large rock deflecting water. This type of structure creates a current break or pillow in front of the rock and is definitely a fish attractor. Most people know that fish will hold behind a rock, but many are unaware that they will also hold in the hydro cushion in the front of the rock. 
I will always cover both the front and back of rocks and boulders when searching for fish. This is an exceptional place to use a dry fly to search for resting salmon. Using a dry fly, such as a bomber, can be some of the most exciting fishing on the hunt. Cool. This is a fresh fish. This guy took right at the end of the swing. I think you saw him take. Oh, yeah. You saw the tail yeah. move? Saw him and I lifted up, and he was there. Oh, he's coming towards me. I got to tell you, this is where you really need Keep large fight arbor fight. reel to fight these fish in good capacity because when they come towards you, you got to pick up line fast. Now he's gone right in there. Look at that. All right. This will be my first one on the hunt, even though I've had four fish swing at it, take it, and this is my second fish that's actually taken the hook. It's incredible. Beautiful. You see me get the, you got the hook out already? Oh, yes. Okay, you got the hook, okay. Right there. Look at that, beautiful fish. What's that, about 10 pounds? Oh, for sure. Yeah, okay, let's let her go. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and learn from these tips and tricks. You know, these last 14 seasons have been really great. If you want to learn more, I recommend you go to our website. We have lots of great videos and tips and tricks. As well, our Facebook page is an incredible resource. We have videos, we have techniques, we have weekly contests. They're really great. For all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Scientific Anglers, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet, Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net. To learn more about the New Fly Fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.